we're focusing on starting the year healthy, preventive measures you can take for your health. I'm with CU Medicine Vascular Surgeon, Dr. Emily Malgore. She's in our Highlands Ranch Hospital, CU Medicine Vascular Surgery Clinic. I want to talk about stroke prevention through carotid surgery. So first, just explain what carotid artery disease is and why you might need surgery for that. Thank you. Carotid arteries are the major vessels running from your heart into your brain. They arise right under your collarbones and sort of traverse up the neck on either side. And they are one of the most common causes of a stroke because these arteries can fill with plaque and plaque develops in our vessels over multiple years, sometimes over decades. We believe it begins in our twenties and is the result of a combination of factors. Um, known risk factors for plaque development inside your arteries include high blood pressure, high uh, cholesterol, smoking, renal disease or kidney disease, any history of diabetes, and essentially a family history of plaque development. Sometimes it just runs in families. Those, those things tie in together to create a situation where a patient develops silent disease inside their vessels. And the carotid arteries are understandably important to provide blood flow to the brain. And if that's compromised by narrowing of the arteries due to plaque, that's where we come in. Are there any symptoms? You talked about risk factors, but are there any symptoms where someone would know they might need carotid surgery to prevent a stroke or that they're at risk of having a stroke because of that? Sometimes it's silent. Uh, it could be picked up by a provider who's doing a physical exam on a patient. If they place their stethoscope over the patient's neck and they hear a swishing sound or a brewery, that is sometimes the first thing that clues a person into the fact that the patient might have plaque in their neck arteries, which prompts imaging. Patients though, if they had anything resembling a stroke, whether it's a visual disturbance or loss of vision, even if it's momentary, if they had slurred speech or an inability to speak, even if it's brief, or any paralysis or weakness on one side of their body in an arm or a leg, those are very serious symptoms that should be taken um, with the with sincerity and very seriously, and they always prompt imaging, sometimes on an emergent basis. Certainly anyone who has a profound mini stroke that we call a transient ischemic attack or a TIA or a full on stroke should be seen in an emergency department and carotid surgeons are usually involved. What does surgery involve? What does that look like? Carotid surgery has changed dramatically over the past 15 to 20 years. Traditionally, Carotid surgery involves us opening the skin. We open the artery, clean it out, and close it. Those obviously are with some risk. Other forms of intervention on the carotid arteries that are minimally invasive have been around a long time too, where we'll slide a wire into the artery, um, direct it into the carotid artery in the neck, and then place a stent over the wire. Not everybody is a candidate for these minimally invasive procedures. Sometimes stents are just not... Uh, ideal for a patient for various reasons, sometimes just anatomically. Now we have a very exciting form of intervention that is safer than both stenting traditionally through done through the groin arteries or open surgery. And it's a mix of the two. It's called transcarotid artery revascularization. So now we will still make an incision near the collarbone, expose the carotid artery, but from there we don't open the artery and clean it out physically. We access it then with a needle and a wire and put a stent through the artery. There are multiple reasons why this is better. One of the main ones is that when we do this procedure, we hook the patient up to a device that directs blood flow backwards through the carotid arteries that we're working on, and it'll flow backwards from the brain. So any plaque that's released while we do the repair or the surgery is brought through this tubing, filtered out, and the blood is given back to the patient. When you get to the point of having carotid artery disease, our lifestyle change is not likely to work as well. It, there is quite a bit a patient can do on his or her own behalf. So if you are a smoker, that's the first thing we try to check off the list to address. Um, obviously, that's not an easy task given um, how difficult it is to quit smoking. But smoking roughly for us is considered a risk factor three times as great as all of the other risk factors that I talked about. Controlling your blood pressure, your blood glucose, and your blood cholesterol are also huge. Obviously, if a patient has kidney disease, that's something that does contribute to arterial disease, but it's less easily controlled. So these are things we talk to patients about because I think 
when someone finds out they're at risk of having a stroke, they want to do something and um, take a more proactive approach.